Yes, it's Wednesday, the very best day of the week. It is the best day of the week because this is the time that I, John Perry, get to nerd out on a skull, show it to you, and you, the good people of the internet, get to guess what it is. This is last week's guest, and a lot of you tried to guess what this is, and last time I checked, there was only one person that identified this skull correctly. YouTube user Hot Dog Lost Fog. Congratulations. Your prize this week is being the only person that was right on the internet. That must feel good. Congratulations. Now, normally I'd be a little bit disappointed if everybody got the skull wrong, like what happened this week, but it was so tricky, in fact, that I had to get help before I did last week's video. I had to make sure that I knew, in fact, what this thing is. I'm borrowing this skull from Shintimini Wildlife Center, and they were pretty sure that it was a stellar sea lion, but nobody that I talked to there was 100% sure, and I couldn't figure it out, even like Googling images of stellar sea lion skulls. A lot of the Google results that I was getting were actually showing me California sea lions instead of stellar sea lions. I had to get on Twitter and ask professionals if they could ID this, and I did get an ID from Robert Bosnecker, he said, yes, this is a female Eumatopius, which is a stellar sea lion. The giveaway is the upper cheek tooth count, and there's a big diastema between premolar 4 and molar 1. Molar 1 is often somewhat posteriorly inclined as well, and so we're seeing all of those features in this skull. This, this was actually really confusing because this here is a sleeping family of stellar sea lions, and you will notice here that the male is significantly larger than the female. and in stellar sea lions and in California sea lions, the males will develop a sagittal crest, a very distinct crest on the top of their head. It runs along the sagittal suture, and it's an attachment for the muscles of the jaw, the temporalis muscle, the, the muscle of the temple. Having that crest gives them a little bit more bite strength, which they probably use when they're fighting other males. If you look at this skull, this skull is from a California sea lion, and it has a huge sagittal crest huge temporal muscles there. So yes, this is either a female skull or it might be a subadult. That's also possible. Stellar sea lions, by the way, live in the northern Pacific. You'll see them on the Oregon coast, but it's hard to tell them apart from California sea lions. They're also the main sea lions that you'll see if you're in Alaska or they also hang out in China and I believe even like Japan and that, that region. Really cool animals. Massive. For this week's specimen, I am taking you on a trip to a museum in Charleston. And I don't want to tell you exactly which museum it is quite yet, because I don't want to give away what animal this is. But this creature is extinct, so this is going to be a little bit uh, difficult. We've been doing a lot of tougher ones these days, which is fun. No Googling. But I am going to give you a few hints, because this is an extinct animal. <laughs> and when I say oh, we're going to guess what extinct animal this is. That could open up the door to anything from, like, dinosaurs to, you know, whatever. So this this is not a dinosaur. This is a mammal. And I want to talk a little bit real quickly about how you can tell this is a mammal. We talked about this uh, last time. We talked about tooth differentiation in mammals. So if you go back in the fossil record and you look at early mammals, all of them have incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. The incisors being the sort of flat teeth in the front, the canines being the spike teeth uh, to the sides of those incisors, and then you have premolars behind those and molars in the back. This species has actually lost a lot of its dental differentiation, but you can still see that the canines are larger than the incisors. They're just taller. And then you can see in the molars you get some some pretty obvious differentiation. So this thing is actually losing some of its dental differentiation, but it still has it. By the way, the modern lineage that this gave rise to does not have very much dental differentiation. Most of the species in the group that this thing gave rise to, all of the teeth are identical in it, even though they're mammals. So that's, that's kind of a pretty big hint. Don't Google it. The other big giveaway that this is a mammal is the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch, let me just show you actually on some bones in my office. So here we are back in my office. This 
on a human is the zygomatic arch. It's the cheekbone. And if you look at the bobcat that we had on the show earlier, he's got a really nice big cheekbone. And if you look at the skunk as well, look from above, this huge arch. And, you know, other animals do have a bone that's similar to this, but it's not, there's not this giant arch. The zygomatic arch is what we call it. It's very specific to mammals. And what happens here is that behind this arch, so if we look at it in humans, look closely there, you have a, a big muscle right here. It's a jaw muscle. It's the temporalis or the temporal muscle, the, the muscle of the temple. And that connects down to this little, uh, little nub on the mandible, on the lower jaw. Let me show you in the, in the cat. It's really obvious in the cat. It connects down to this. So it goes underneath, the muscle goes underneath the zygomatic arch and connects to this process, which is called the coronoid process. That is what powers the movement of the jaw, a lot of the movement of the jaw. And other animals, like crocodiles and so on, they actually have a completely different hinge. Uh, mammals, mammals' jaws hinge on this little structure here, which is called the mandibular condyle. Condyle is just any round bone that fits into another bone. So the mandibular condyle is unique in mammals. Other uh, reptiles use a very different joint, and crocodiles use a very different joint. Birds use a different joint. So these are different ways that you can tell when you're looking at a mammal. <laughs> Hopefully uh, what I told you was actually informative just now. So this creature that you are seeing is definitely a mammal. It's large. You can see my hand in comparison to this skull right here. Very, very large animal. That's all the hints I'm going to give you. It's a big old mammal that's extinct. What could it be? What do you think this beast is? Let me know in the comments, and I will be very impressed if you figure this out without Googling it. <laughs> I'll be very impressed. That's it for this week's Skull. Good luck.